Okay, so we have our Windows Server 2022 set up. So that's great. Now what we're gonna do, we can go ahead and close that. When you close a virtual machine here, just go ahead and default to save the machine state. What that's gonna do is save a snapshot and that's gonna allow you to come back to the machine at the moment that you turn it off. So that's really helpful. We already have our Kali machine running and our Kali machine is far less resource intensive than our Windows Server machine. So I'm gonna turn off the Windows Server machine, save that machine state. And now we're gonna add our Windows 10 machine, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and create a new machine. We're gonna go up to tools. And similar to what we did with the Windows Server machine, we're gonna create a Windows 10 machine. So I'm gonna name this as Windows 10 2024. And we're just like Microsoft Windows, Windows 10 64 bit. Go ahead and next. Uh, I'm just gonna give it a little extra RAM. I don't wanna give it too much. It shouldn't have to run that much. It's a client machine. You know what, I actually leave it at the default, honestly. Because the client machine shouldn't need to do as much processing as the uh, server machine. So just leave it at two gigs would be fine here. I mean, if you have a lot of RAM, go ahead, go nuts. But you know, we don't. I'm gonna create a new virtual hard disk. Create virtual box disk image. I'm gonna go to expert mode because I don't want this to be 50 gigabytes. That's a lot. Let's bring that down to 20. You can also just type in here, so it's 20. I'm gonna leave it as dynamically allocated and I'm gonna make sure that this is in the right folder. Uh, add it to the cybersecurity the 2024 virtual machine. So I'm gonna select this 2024 virtual machine. And we're gonna just label it Windows 10 2024. So we'll go ahead and leave that as a virtual box disk image. Again, if you wanna transfer this at some point to VMware, you can select VHD, virtual hard disk. But if you're not doing that, then that's fine. Okay, so now we have that up. Now we're gonna go ahead and start that. Now when we start that, going to ask us where, what uh, image do we want to use? Select the startup disk. Okay, so this is what you should see. So if you accidentally X out of that, check the last video for how to fix that. But if you don't, just go ahead and select it now. Select this folder button and go to add and navigate to your 2024 lab folder and select, should look like this, the ISO the disk image file for your Windows 10 device. So not the server one, but the Windows 10. So hit, hit OK, hit choose, and then start. Now it's gonna start that. It's gonna start Windows 10 and we should be able to go through the Windows 10 installation steps to fully install our Windows 10 device. So we're going to select our language here, install now. This is going to be a little simpler than the Windows Server because we, we're just going to be uh, doing this Windows 10 a little simpler. We're not going to hit upgrade, we're going to hit custom, install Windows only. Here we're going to have to create a new partition, hit apply, okay. Use that partition, just hit next. It's gonna go ahead and copy those Windows files. That's that virtual disk that we, we created earlier. So it's gonna install those files there and we're gonna go through the rest of the installation process. So we're gonna do, we're gonna connect the Windows 10 device. We're gonna click this domain join instead button. We're gonna make our Type our username there as Cybercraft. I'm gonna select that password. Select that password. I'm just gonna add uh, the same 
I'm just going to write uh, parrot for all of these. So parrot. My cousin's name was Parrot. And my first pet's name. I don't think that would make sense here. So I'll say first school I attended was Parrot. <laughs> Alright. So go ahead, just a moment there. And this is going to log us in. And we can complete our setup here for our Windows 10 device. I want to turn off the location. Uh, I don't want advertising ID or I don't want any of this. I don't want <laughs> I don't want Windows to track me on all of these things. Okay, and I don't want an AI assistant. Thank you, Windows. Windows is always finding ways to push these products onto you. So we definitely don't want that right now. And this is gonna log us in here. And then what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to connect to our Windows server. Okay, so now that we have a Windows server installed, we need to add some services here. What we're going to do first is we're going to add Active Directory. So we don't have Active Directory listed here. So we need to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. We're going to click Next, Role-Based and Feature-Based Installation. Select our server here. We have our server on Windows 24. That works. We're going to select Active Directory Domain Services. Add features. That's it. It's going to automatically enable the .NET features that we need. Just leave that as it is. We're not using Azure, so don't worry about that. And we're going to restart the server automatically and then install this. going to start our installation, it's going to install Active Directory, it's going to restart, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create our own domain, our own Cybercraft domain. The ultimate goal here is to link this Windows 10 device to our domain here. So in order to do that, we're going to be using this Windows server as our Active Directory server. So we're basically making this our authentication server. So with Windows Server 2022, you can do lots of different, lots of different tools. You can do lots of different services. So we're going to make this kind of like our jack of all trades server for our little network that we have, and it's going to be our Active Directory server that we're going to connect other things to. If you've been working through the CompTIA labs, for example, that's ex almost exactly how they set it up. They have a Windows Server device, and it may be listed or it may be hidden depending on the lab. And that's what's allowing the Windows device to connect. It's connecting to that server that's somewhere on the uh, on that virtual network. You may or may not see it there. So, all right. So that's succeeded. We're going to close this. And we're going to have to restart here. But before we restart, let's go ahead and set this. You should have a new notification up here to promote this server to a domain controller. We're going to go ahead and click that. And we don't have a domain to add this to, so we're going to add a new force. I'm going to call this CybercraftTraining.com. CybercraftTraining.com is going to be the name. You definitely have to have a .com, .something. You can add it. Make it whatever you want. Go ahead and click next. Our password there. Make that the same password you're using for the rest of the lab. Of course, if this is a real server. In a real environment, we want to do that. Oh yeah, and we want to uncheck uh, DNS here. We want to uncheck DNS. Now NetBIOS is going to automatically populate. It's going to have a character limit. Leave it as it is when it populates there. Okay. And then as we go through, we're going to just take the defaults. Just keep track. Just make note of these. You don't have to write it down or anything just for learning purposes. 
going to give us a summary here. And hopefully this verifies correctly. Okay. Prerequisite check complete. All prerequisites passed successfully. Now we can install this. So we're going to go ahead and install our Active Directory and create this new domain, the Cybercraft domain. Okay, so we have our Server 22 installed with Active Directory. And we have Active Directory users and computers. We're going to go to Active Directory users and computers. And we have our users here. We see our domain for CybercraftTrain.com. We can expand this carrot out and go to users. We see all of our users here. Let's go ahead and create a new user that we'll be using for the Windows 10 machine. So I'm going to create a new user. I'm just going to name this user Cyber, last name Craft, and then the logon name will be Cybercraft at CybercraftTraining.com. Go ahead and hit next. Password. I'm going to use that password I've been using for the lab environment. I'm going to say the user does not need to change the password and I'm going to say this password never expires. Now you never want to configure this on your real server, but for our lab environment this is going to be fine. So we're going to say okay, that's fine. Use your login name cybercraft at cybercrafttraining.com. Okay, great. Uh, and apparently this does not meet our complexity requirements. So we could change that. And I think probably because we're using that, I think we're using that here as our password for our administrator account, which is why we can't use it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a different password here and that should work there. Yeah. So that can't be the same password. You could change that in your password settings, your group policy settings, but I'm just going to change that to that other password that I'm going to use and then make sure that you write that down uh, whenever you go a as you're going through the class here or as you're going through your configurations make sure you write that down in your uh, lab files so i'm going to write that into the configurations file here i have so i'm going to say windows 10 password and i just made it this password Username Cybercraft. Okay. Alright, so you do want to take note of those as you go through. Very helpful later. So now we do have that user, and that user is. We can add that user to a group, and I'm going to do that right here. I'm just going to type a few letters there to get the administrators to pop up and check names. That's going to pop up the administrators group, so I'm going to add that user to the administrators group. Now that our actual directory is configured and we have that Cybercraft account set up with admin privileges, we're ready for the next step.